Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. This is the finals of the May Vintage event at Scholars Games. And it is a rematch here of myself on Dredge versus John on Outcome. John taking the first time around. Here we go, Dredge down to six cards, but finding that bizarre. It looks like losing the die roll here. Definitely not where you want to be versus outcome. Being on the draw. Very problematic. And we've got a full hand being dumped. One card left in hand. And windfall. So off to the races here. Losing... That bizarre Baghdad, but gonna be doing some dredging. So six dredges here. And it looks like for certain gonna get full value out of these dredges. Narcomoeba's coming in all over the place. Prized amalgams as well, but six is a lot of cards for outcome to draw. Still has mana available as a resource, so we'll see what happens. A final draw here. So a fistful of dredgers. And gonna, if I get a turn, start with three creatures in play. But Lotus joins the fray, giving John access to five or more mana. Six with the one floating. Opal seven. Chrome Mox. I mean, so much mana. And Wheel of Fortune as well. In for a penny, in for a pound. Going to be able to dredge literally the entire deck here. And at this point... Leaving just four cards left, so still very dead to memory jar, but outside of range of Ancestral Recall. So the brakes pumped a little bit. Will it matter? Is John just going to take a first turn win in this finals? Paradoxical outcome. And we are now in Lethal Tendrils territory. Rim Monolith coming in. Such a powerful addition to these decks. Mana Vault, one of the strongest cards now in Paradoxical Outcome. See how John solves this. It is live or die. His choice. Really just depends on what he has in his hand and what he can get done. Mystical Tutor. Mystical Tutor with any type of card drawing should do it. And another Paradoxical Outcome. So apparently not having access to the black mana that he needs. To just win with the tendrils. Nope, actually just making a gigantic, gigantic storm count. Leaving some uncertainty here, though. This is... This is splashy, but this is suboptimal. Tendrils would have been lethal. My hand is known. So that mystical, if it had grabbed Tendrils of Agony, this game would be over. Instead, still a very, very slight chance that he could fumble. So slight. <laughs> And all these artifacts coming down. How is he going to solve this here? 
we see another paradoxical outcome. And a merchant scroll, so he can actually PO twice more. He can draw his entire deck here, I believe. We'll see if it actually comes to that. And there's a twister and a jar. Jar actually would have been lethal. Sensei's top. So Memory Jar would have ended the game on the spot. Only four cards left in the library. That is a card I could have played around. I instead opted to try and get that Colgan into the graveyard and set up a definitely lethal first turn if I in fact get one. And once more around the sun here with paradoxical outcome. Like about 12 cards drawn there. We see a vamp tutor, a demonic tutor. And demonic should do it. Lion's Eye Diamond could be sacked in response if Black Mana is in question. Though I don't believe it is. I think we should be totally fine on the Black Mana front. There's the Demonic Tutor. And Tendrils was hiding out in the deck. But Opal and Lotus Petal fulfill the two black requirement. And John takes it down on turn one. Despite dredging 56 cards. So there you go. Actually, I guess it's not actually 56, right? Because I started with six. So 48 cards. But a well-earned check mark there. And going into game number two. Down a game without taking a turn. John showing a propensity to go hellbent early. Very much a question of how good the discard spells are going to be for Dredge. On the play, still could be quite good. On the draw, it may be a consideration to be boarding out some of these discard spells. As John is really just going pedal to the metal with this deck. One of the strengths of the, the Paradoxical Outcome decks compared to previous ad nauseum tendrils or mana drain tendrils ak tendrils uh, some of the different builds that have been uh, in the format uh, throughout the years where people have tried to merge kind of like blue control shells and draw engines with a tendrils finish uh, those older builds very often had decisions to make with their mana base did they want to save moxes to be able to build the storm count to barely get to that lethal tendrils paradoxical outcome that is not the case you are really able to just deploy your resources and then pick them up and put them back down. And then eventually when you are able to win, the tendrils are usually for an insanely high amount uh, compared to just barely limping over the finish line. Uh, the ability to chain uh, POs together is, is really remarkable and, and to a degree kind of surprising uh, that the, the card has been uh, something that players have been able to play with. Uh, it's it's kind of nice. To see, I mean, we never got to play with Mind's Desire as a four of, and the main criticism was the ability to Mind's Desire into another Mind's Desire. Uh, that was certainly a criticism levied against Gush as well, uh, the ability to Gush into more Gushes. Uh, really, the chaining of draw engine cards uh, has historically been a strong argument uh, against uh, those cards being in the format, and uh, PO does it uh, possibly better than anything that we've ever seen, so... It's really interesting to see this, this deck continuing to evolve uh, with the different ways that it can be built. Here, John is on a very all-in plan uh, using cards like Windfall, Memory Jar, Wheel of Fortune to, uh, to have as explosive uh, a deck as possible uh, using really just an all-star list of the most broken cards that Vintage has ever seen. And P.O. feels very much at home uh, alongside those cards. Here we go into game two. See if we can at least force a game three here. 
against what may be a, a rather poor matchup. Seen Gurmag Angler and Hollow One, but no Bizarre Baghdad means that is going back. That is a recurring theme here. You'll notice anytime that there's hand selection going on, there's one criteria. It is binary, yes or no, is Bizarre there. And in this case, Serum Powder going to allow for a free draw six and another draw six. Uh, this one, just pausing for a moment on it, has Unmask and Ingot Chewer, uh, but that's really not going to be good enough. There's, there's no doubt you're really going to need Bizarre. So here, mulling down to five after getting turn one but at least going to get a turn here. And Bizarre. Seeing Ingot Chewer. Bridge from below. Get a hollow one. I mean, it's a start. Tormod's Crypt. So Tormod's threatens to slow down a lot of what we've got here. And Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. I think we're just going to draw seven here now that the Tormod script's on board. Could have dredged back the Grave Troll to try and set up a forced cracking of the Tormod script. Might have been reasonable there. Probably would have been worthwhile. And it looks like Tinker and Force of Will got some quality cards on the other side of the board to worry about. I believe there's a bridge from below over there. The Mana Confluence. That's going to trigger Bloodgast. John is left with the decision here to let that come in or to activate the crypt. So Bloodgast comes in. Activating Bizarre. Now Mana Confluence is going to allow for Hardcast Cabal Therapy here. And it's going to be able to allow the flashback of Cabal Therapy with Bloodgast as well. So could have multiple cards getting stripped out of John's hand here. The fact that he did not make a land drop, very problematic. Drawing two. Discarding some Narcomoebas. Those would have been much better being dredged in. Like reconsidering the discarded cards. What do we have here? Cabal therapy, Narcomoeba in a question mark, therapy being flashed back. Question here if he uses Tor mods to prevent the, the token being generated or not. And Force of Will pitching Tinker. Zombie on board. Another hollow one. No second force of will. And now Cabal Therapy is going to be able to hit at least one card. So, so this therapy is going to go on the stack. Even if I whiff, I can flash it back before Tormod's Crypt can remove this Cabal Therapy. Oh, and instead Ingot Chewer. So forget about stripping the hand. Mana Crypt is being targeted here by Ingot Chewer. And that's going to create even more of a clock. So 12 damage on board. Just Tormod's Crypt in play. John in terrible shape here. 
that Wheel of Fortune, absolutely not ideal for him. And there the Tormod script is fired off. Putting John down to just three. That Mana Crypt may have actually been welcome on the battlefield. It could have done the last three damage. Uh, but it looks like this is going to be it. Lotus, one of the only possible draws here for John that could allow for Twister into all sorts of shenanigans. Uh, but Twister's going to get nabbed. Uh, so now John essentially going to need a mana source into Brainstorm for the pure nuts. But Brainstorm's going to get grabbed as well. Preordained getting grabbed, and that's going to do it. John's options completely stripped away in a very unfortunate Wheel of Fortune for him. And that is just the, the double-edged sword of that card, I suppose. Going into game number three for all the marbles here. This time he will be on the play, however. Taking a look at Memory Jar and some other, other cards to consider. Wheel of Fortune and Windfall are definitely a gambit versus Dredge. The ability to dredge off of each one of those draws can be very punishing. I had played against John several months ago at a Gaming Etc. tournament uh, where he blindly Wheel of fortune on the first turn. Uh, this is, I believe, one of the first events that I was actually running dredge, and it was a very unwelcome turn of events for him. Uh, his hand was pretty reasonable, but he did have to pass the turn, and it was just game over. Uh, Wheel of Fortune had just set up an, an absolutely lethal graveyard. See what John can do on the play here. He does have quite a favorable matchup in terms of the speed of his deck, but he does bring in some cards as well. Cards like Graph Digger's Cage and Tormod's Crypt. Uh, now those can be picked up with Paradoxical Outcome. Uh, but they also do very little to hinder his deck, which is, is solid for him, uh, really, uh, compared to some of the other sideboard cards that people sometimes have to hold their nose and run. Uh, talking about cards like Containment Priest, uh, where you may have ways of putting creatures into play, like a Death and Taxes deck in Legacy. Uh, there's really not much of a downside. Uh, really, it's just Yawgmoth's Will. Uh, that Graph Digger's Cage would stop. Uh, and Tormod's Crypt is really absolutely where you want to be with a deck like Outcome uh, when it's built for speed uh, because it's going to enable your metal craft and be an artifact that you can pick up and put down. And it comes down very quickly as well, uh, being able to break up plays uh, beginning on your first turn. Cards like Surgical Extraction and Fairy Macabre also. Uh, a consideration, but not as big in Vintage as they are in Legacy. And John actually on the mull here. A six card hand. He is keeping with a scry. Looks like a couple of prized amalgam in hand along with a Gurmag Angler. And almost stole the play from him there. Took a little while with those opening hand selections and lost track of who was going first, but Pearl into Mox Opal, Underground Sea. We'll see if there's another artifact to turn on Metalcraft. Ancestral, that's a good way to get some artifacts into hand, and it looks like Lotus Petal's one of them. Got a decision to make here. Looks like he can Mystical during the end step at the very least. 
and then there may be a Taxian probe in hand. If that's the case, he could have probed into a card like Time Walk and kept the ball going. Uh, and it looks like Bizarre. And passing the turn, so not trying to get a hollow one into play here. May be suspect. With no hollow one in hand, it would have meant that we'd have to draw into it. But Twister being grabbed, it looks like being rewarded here for not tapping Bizarre. Bizarre will still be able to be tapped during the end step if it gets to that point. So Opal's legendary ones going away. Four mana. And Paradoxical Outcome to kick stuff off. A draw three for just a couple of mana. And it looks like a Graft Digger's Cage there, along with perhaps Tinker. And there's the cage. That is going to make for some uphill battling here. But there's an Ingot Chewer. So the mission's clear from here. Going to need to draw into a red source. But in Undiscovered Paradise in hand. So the, the gates are, are definitely open here. Going to be able to evoke this Ingot Chewer and get rid of that Graft Digger's Cage. Looks like thinking through the plan. That twister looming in the background. They're going to draw. Realistically hoping to hit bridge from belows. Uh, we did see earlier in one of the matches how powerful Ingot Chewer can be combined with multiple bridges. Bizarre being activated. Prized Amalgam. Grave Troll and Narco Amoeba. And Cabal Therapy being fired off here. This could possibly hit that Time Twister. Does John use his Force of Will on it? And he does. Protects that Twister. It looks like all of this work about to get undone. Be able to make a land drop. There's the twister. Not much to say about that. So therapy. Denied by force of will and John getting seven fresh ones. My bazaar is tapped, so I will not be able to kick the turn off dredging, though honestly with Graft Digger's Cage in play, you may not even want to be dredging. Really what dredging will do is enable you to cast your Gurmag Anglers, and that's about it. On with some decisions here. Seven fresh cards. Let's see how busted they are. Taking his time. Lion's Eye Diamond could provide a tremendous amount of mana with a tutor. And Yogg will, without passing priority, crack LED. But, oh, Graft Digger's Cage is in play. That is not going to work. This is not going to end well.
Neither player has caught it yet. Tapping top. Finally, Cage is caught. So an all-in play here, denied by Graft Digger's Cage. What a blowout scenario. LED, the worst card possible for that. Getting rid of all of his other resources from hand. That is a devastating turn of events. Now it's the question of can things be rebuilt on the dredge side or outcome just draws an outcome or something similar. Two mana, blood gassed. And hollow one. Three turn clock established. John going to have th at least three draws. Activating Bazaar. Pitching Icarid. Bridge from below. And do you dig here? I think you do. There's prized amalgam. He's not really going to get cast anytime soon. Lotus, a dangerous card. Just two turns away for John. More blood gassed. Just not finding Ingot Chewer here. At this point, though, Lethal presented John. Going to need something spectacular off the top. Can he do it? Probe is a good start. But no, the top of the deck does not bail him out there. And the finals goes to Dredge. That's all for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please help grow the channel by subscribing. You'll be notified when we upload new videos like Fast Effect, Double Speed Magic with Commentary, or Untapped, our raw tournament gameplay. Thanks for watching.